Hello and welcome back to another episode of Measurement in a Minute. I'm your host, Justin Kozak with Lakeside Process Controls. Today's video, we're continuing our discussion around Rosemount and Micromotion Flow Meter Technologies. In particular, we're talking the basics of fluid mechanics so you understand what we need to consider when sizing and selecting the appropriate flow meters. Today we're introducing something known as the Reynolds number. And if you learn about this at all in school, it might bring back some terrible memories. And trust me, we're, we're not going to dive into too much of the math behind it. Just to understand that this is a dimensionless number. Um, and this number really is a ratio between those dynamic and viscous forces. That's the formal definition. Here's what the equation looks like. Uh, but for all intents and purposes today, what we care about for the Reynolds number is it allows us to compare different flow regimes uh, between different piping networks. And this allows us to get a better understanding of what the flow conditions are within that piping network. As you can see, it takes into account the density, the velocity, the diameter of the pipe, and the viscosity of the fluid. And that is ultimately the Reynolds number. Now, depending on the Reynolds number that you have in your system, it will impact how it's classified. Is it laminar flow, is it transition flow, or is it turbulent flow? This is going to be depending on if your Reynolds number is 2,000 or less, 2 to 4,000, or above 4,000. And the difference, as you can see depicted here, really has to do with the average velocities versus the maximum velocity in the piping system. As we know, uh, fluids that are near the edge of the pipe uh, are going to travel a lot slower than fluids near the center of the pipe. And when you have laminar flow, as the name implies, it's very streamlined laminar layers sliding over top of each other. And you can see that center line there, that maximum velocity, is going to be very, very far away from the average velocity. With a turbulent flow regime, uh, we have, a, as it describes, very turbulent flow, and that average velocity is going to be a lot closer to that maximum velocity. And that's what we want. We want a flat, nice and even velocity profile. And the reason is for this is because a lot of volumetric flow meters are really measuring the velocity. And so if we're measuring velocity, we want to make sure that wherever we're measuring this velocity across this pipe, if it's the average or at different points, we want to make sure that is reflective and well representative of the actual velocity in our flow. Meters. Now, how does this impact you? Well, not really much because when we do our sizing, we take this into consideration, but you'll often hear something called straight pipe diameters. We'll talk about that in the next video. This plays a role based off the Reynolds number. Should you have any questions about Rosemount or Micromotion flow meters or any other of our technologies, please reach out to us at www.lakesidecontrols.com. Thanks and have a great day.